दिस इज भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत ये है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत नमस्कार सत्याकाल वेलकम एंड आदाब यू आर लिस्निंग टू भारत एफएम और वन ऑफ इट्स काइंड मल्टाइलिंगुअल इक्लेक्टिक प्रोवाइडर ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड न्यूज टू इंडियन अमेरिकन हेडक्वार्टर्ड इन सिंसिनाटी ओहायो भारत एफ एम एज शोज आउट ऑफ सिंसिनाटी शिकागो एंड फीनिक्स We take pleasure in our ability to cater to your bhakti, chusti, sphurti, shakti and masti needs with our audio and visual shows. Check out bharatfm.com for our online program schedule and archives. I'm sure the content will definitely tickle your senses. Tune in via the 24-hour web streaming on bharatfm.com or via the Bharat FM app. More information can be procured at 5134885070. Hi everybody happy 4th of July to everybody in the United States happy Canada day and welcome to storytellers cafe i'm your host usha venkatraman bringing you stories every sunday night india time and sunday morning united states welcome cincinnati phoenix and chicago to storytellers cafe and a warm welcome to all the listeners in india especially bangalore i guess you have guessed my guest tonight is from the beautiful garden city of bangalore let me bring soumya shrinivasan on to the screen and then i will introduce her welcome soumya to storytellers cafe thank you so much thank you for the, for being patient and you know how things are we do make mistakes and that's what i did so uh, friends let me introduce soumya shrinivasan who is a um, mphil in psychology and has turned into a professional storyteller and been practicing this for over 12 years soumya is a certified mindfulness practitioner and happiness coach She uses storytelling and theater techniques to develop creative thinking through a venture called Soul Space Storytell. Soumya is one of the founder members of Bangalore Storytelling Society, a not-for-profit community that promotes, nurtures, and spreads awareness about the art of oral storytelling. Soumya facilitates circles of healing. storytelling in bangalore and is the chief storyteller at mukta foundation bangalore an organization working in the space of mental health recently during covid times soumya came together with four other storytellers from across india to form the indian storytellers healing network that has a vision to spread stories for renewal and hope in the community kudos to ishn soumya soumya believes in the transformative power of stories and storytelling and would like to spread the rest of her life gathering stories from around the world and using them for healing and recovery more power to you soumya soumya has facilitated training programs and workshops for institutes like christ university bangalore women's christian college chennai and alva college mudbidri to name a few she has designed the curriculum and co facilitated a course on the art of storytelling for the ipm program offered at manipal academy of higher education also recently soumya designed and delivered an online four week self learning course for the open education resource for a better world project integrating storytelling and positive psychology she's been awarded the yuva shakti award and citation by the ladies special magazine and rotary club in the month of march 2021 for her services to the field of storytelling her current field of work includes curriculum development 
and learner-centric pedagogy, integrating storytelling, creative communication, and personality development. You can follow Saumya on Instagram at saumya.rchinivan underscore soul space. Her Facebook page is soul space storytell. And Saumya also has a personal blog, which if you go to the screen on Storytellers Cafe, you can read about her blog spot. Yes. So welcome to Storytellers Cafe, Saumya. Thank you for your patience and bearing with me. Not at all. I'm so happy to be here and honored that you are I'm doing this with you, Usha. I know that we met quite some time back and uh, that memory popped up for me of meeting you and uh, our storytelling journey. And I'm so happy to be uh, part of our tribe, our storytelling tribe, and to be here doing this with you. Thank you, Soumya. You're being very kind. Of course, I have fond memories of uh, you telling that beautiful story. And uh, I've always admired Bangalore Storytelling Society for the kind of work that you started to keep alive the oral tradition. And I never tire of telling that you are the inspiration behind starting Mumbai Storytellers Society. So I'm ever grateful for crossing paths with such power-packed ladies in Bangalore. Uh, so I always ask my guests the question about their journey. But here I just want to add this bit because you are a healing storyteller. I just came across this beautiful uh, post, actually, which my sister forwarded from Canada today. You know, it says that our itihas contains stories which are psychotherapy personified. Our struggle with emotions and the consequences of our actions are detailed within every single story. And the Absolutely. psychotherapy happens actually when Krishna is talking to Arjuna in the battlefield. You Absolutely. know, it's a beautiful thing. And I just thought I would like to begin that with our session. How did your journey into the field of healing stories begin? What story? Let's uh, sing a song for that. Where do I begin to tell the story of how a greater love can be? The sweet love story that is older than the seas. The simple truth about the love story brings to me. Where do I start? Where do I start? Well, uh, it is a love story, actually. Way back, I fell in love with stories and uh, performing the story. But it soon changed. And I think the change happened in 2015. When more than performing uh, the story, I became a lover of the story itself. And the connections that I was making to story became more important than actually performing the story. And I think that is the moment when I started looking at the healing power of stories. I also happened, I believe strongly that what we seek is seeking us, as Rumi has said. So at that moment, I was seeking to move into something which would take me deeper into storytelling and not it and not just be about performing stories to children and telling stories to children. And that's when I met a beautiful soul called Deepa Mahesh, who was a dance uh, uh, therapist, a life coach. And she introduced me, pulled me into Anthroposophy. And as you know, Anthroposophy uses storytelling for children and is a pedagogical method where stories are the fulcrum, you know, and uh, having been uh, going into that, I realized it's not just children, but even adults will benefit from this. And along with Deepa, we started having these circles where I would offer the story and she would process it for the people who came. And soon I, I too learned how to process a story. And uh, as you very rightly said, Usha, at the end of it, it is the emotions and how we are facing the battle, the Kurukshetra that is happening within us every day. It is that and using the story to identify these battles and to uh, to face them, 
to um, and uh, to not analyze i don't like the word analyze to examine them is what it is all about and the wonder that is associated with uh, how much we learn about ourselves started becoming uh, my passion and so that has continued till date and i still in very much in love with stories and the power of a story is uh, what keeps me uh, completely enthralled there's a very uh, i mean let me quickly tell you a beautiful story that uh, is actually the first opening story which comes in uh, the collection of short stories collection of folk tales by ak ramanujam once there's an old woman in a village she had completed all her duties her sons were married her daughter-in-laws were there to help her with the household chores her grandchildren ran around her but still she had woes and grievances but no one to share it with she would want to tell her sons but they never had the time she would want to tell her grand her uh, grandchildren but where they were always running around she would want to talk to her daughter-in-laws but they were not able to listen to the old woman's woes and grievances they and everyone around her did not have what she thought would the patience to listen to her who could she tell one day she decided to leave her house and wandered the streets looking for somebody to talk to somebody to share her grievances they seemed silly and little you know not big ones she just wanted to talk to someone who to tell but you see all the words that she had not uttered had remained within her and had made her very big she looked like a big woman but actually it was not the food she ate but really the words that were inside her and which had never been uttered now walking down the streets she finally came to an old dilapidated mansion she entered the mansion and realized she had known the people who lived there now this mansion was being destroyed might as well tell my woes to the walls over here she thought and went towards the wall and there poured out all her grievances one by one about everything that she could think of her sons first came to her mind all the little little things that she wanted to uh, complain about her sons came out in one gada 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 once that happened she saw to her amazement the wall breaking and falling are how did this happen she turned to the next wall and there now that it, this tide could not be stopped she poured out all her grievances about the daughter in laws and her grandchildren and everybody she could think of to her amazement the walls tap 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 all around her just fell brick by brick and she watched it with amazement just then the mestri he came in he was getting somebody to break the walls and look at this miracle this woman are you have broken the walls i was just going to get somebody to break just the power of your words this is amazing what a good, good job you have done mestri and he why old woman didn't realize what has happened but happy to have poured out all her grievances feeling much lighter she walked out and there as she went back to her home she felt lighter she looked lighter so much so her her daughter in laws looked at her and wondered perhaps we should also be doing this pouring out our grievances and becoming so much thinner huh? what a story such a simple metaphor that once we pour out our grievances we become lighter and even if it's a wall go and say it go and pour your grievances don't keep it inside you and that story is a wonderful story don't you think usha absolutely i agree with you totally um soumya that you need to speak about your problems word it and share it with others i myself underwent a 12 week a narrative therapy session uh, you know starting in march because uh, the pandemic is not easy 
though we storytellers had a lot of story sessions, we also need to share our grievances, our thoughts, anger, our helplessness, hopelessness. Yes. You know, you need to share it in a very uh, uh, a, a space that holds space and very mindful. So you are a mindfulness practitioner and being trained into healing stories. Like um, I read somewhere that a healing storyteller is a story doctor, mm. you know, who uh, goes around uh, uh, not giving pills to uh, people, but kind of uh, offers a therapeutic journey you know, a positive, imaginative way of healing difficult situations. Because, Soumya, I think you'll agree with me, a reactive mind is an emotional mind. If the emotions mm. are controlled, thoughts can be controlled too. A controlled mind gets replaced with intuition. And this is what, again, Krishna asks Arjuna to train his mind. Why I bring uh, Gita back is... Um, uh, I was struck with COVID, though it was mild, and I started, uh, uh, I practiced, uh, I joined, I would say, uh, pranayam and yoga after a long time, after, I would say, a gap of eight to ten years. And uh, now I enjoy every breath that I breathe, every uh, mudra that I do, uh, because I can now understand the um, the importance and how powerful the breath is. It's prana. It's the life-giving energy within you. So uh, sometimes uh, you do have to go through a difficult situation to navigate yourself and come out and find a solution. So uh, Soumya, you're doing a wonderful job of helping people uh, through your stories so uh, my question to you is um, now is there a separate genre of healing stories or stories by themselves are healing so how do you as a mindfulness practitioner as a therapeutic storyteller bring the story into your therapy sessions true 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 I have so, uh, attended one of your workshops, Soumya, but I want the listeners to know from you. Yes, uh, we come back again, again and again, and I think uh, we old souls, as we call us, you know, <laughs> we know that it's at the at the bottom, it's the emotion. Uh, like you rightly said, it's knowing our emotions and being able to channelize these emotions, which ultimately uh, help us in many ways and uh, a story is precisely that it helps connect with our emotions and it helps uh, talk about it now that's what I call a healing story uh, one is that it helps uh, look at ourselves look at where we are now look at our past and also where we are going the future so the story is like a little crucible like a little um, hammock Right, crucible, a hammock where you are to, you know, be in that little hammock, rest in the story and look at yourself in a gentle way. Look at where you're coming from, where you are now and where you're going. And when it does that, that becomes a healing story. Generally, uh, definitions are there. You know, there is so much on the uh, Internet that you can read up and, you know, there are uh, many more who are uh, much more, um, uh, what do you call, uh, they are uh, skilled and they are the experts, uh, Susan Perro in therapeutic storytelling. But what I feel personally for me, a healing story is one which helps me go within and to look at myself in a deeper way. I'm a I'm crazy about self uh, learning and knowing about myself, self growth. And I think that is what I would call a healing story. And uh, uh, I've, I've been uh, bringing this to the people who have been listening. So many of my stories, um, once you hear it, the metaphor, I ask the people to engage in the metaphor of the story and what it is bringing up for us so that uh, everybody, everybody connects to a different thing from a story. There is no one 
uh, moral or one thing that you take back from a story. Every one of us connects to something very different. And there lies our uh, greatest gift from the story. So connecting to that and understanding what the story has to offer me now in this moment is healing, actually. Um, so that's a healing story, if you can... Uh, I, this is how I define healing story. Yes, absolutely. I think absolutely I agree with you. As a storyteller, as a facilitator, you connect. It's all about connection. So you connect the listener to the story. And then the connection happens there. You know, yeah. and then you uh, discuss that. So your background, uh, your training in psychology has definitely helped you because you understand the emotions of uh, yeah. humanity. You know, you studied that in depth, uh, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that gives you an uh, academic background, which helps you to uh, select the right story, which fits the right uh, shoe, so to say. Wonderful. Um, Soumya, would you like to share a healing story with us? What would you like to listen to? You know, I love that how we are so seamlessly going into the uh, 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 story and conversation. Because as you said, the right story chooses us. The story chooses us. I believe that. So tell me which story would you want to listen? A story with a drum or a story which has a mirror. You tell me what you would like me to choose for you at this moment. Oh, oh. are you asking a difficult question. If you have <laughs> a choice, I would like to listen to both the stories. I, I can't choose uh, between the two, uh, but uh, I leave it to my host. Uh, as you know, Storytellers Cafe's USP is to listen to stories. And friends, you're listening to Soumya Srinivasan from Bangalore, who's our guest on Storytellers Cafe. And Soumya, over to you. You choose the story. Okay, <laughs> the story chooses us. Let us move to a land which probably gives such wonderful soil for imagination the cold tundras, the cold arctics is the land of the Inuits. And this story comes from the Inuit people. A very long time ago, in the cold of winter, in a village, in a house, lived a father, mother, and their daughter. And like all parents, they wished their daughter to be married but she refused. I prefer to be here on my own. No one is good enough, was her thought. Men came carrying gifts, ptarmigan feathers, sealskin coats. They stood at the door, but she sent them away. Not good enough. Not good enough until one cold evening a knock was heard on the door when they opened it outside in the freezing cold stood two giant figures two men wearing white fur skin and they beckoned to her she was curious. Who would they be? She looked at the threshold and knew that this was calling to her. And at that moment, she waved goodbye and decided to follow the two men who stood outside her door. Yes, two men wearing white fur skin. 
she stepped out of the threshold and followed them through the darkness, through the cold winter of that land. But they were too fast for her. They were almost running. She ran behind them. Wait, stop, stop. Let me, let me catch up, let me. But they did turn, turn back to look at her and she fell. That's when she felt two hands lift her and drag her through the snow. Drag her and pull her. Too exhausted, she allowed herself to be dragged by the two. And when she had enough energy to look up at the two of them, she realized they were not men. They were indeed polar bears. She could not turn back now. Where were they taking me? She was being dragged, dragged across, across the snow and then they stopped. Just in time for her to see a hole in the ice. And in one swift movement, they threw her into the hole. Down she went, down, down through the freezing cold water, down till she reached the very bottom of the lake. She was cold. She was freezing. And when she opened her eyes, she saw Fishes, creatures were removing her skin, her flesh, and all that was seen was her skeleton. All that was remaining was her skeleton. She was stripped bare, bare. But having been stripped of her skin and her flesh, she realized she was much lighter. And the lightness now carried her up, up and up towards the very hole from which she had fallen. Towards that light that she could see. The hole from which she had come down. And when she emerged out of the hole and pulled herself out, exhausted, she lay down on that snow. There was just silence. She opened her eyes and knew she was all alone. Her skeleton was all that remained, but her mind and her thoughts were hers too. They still remained. There was no one around. Not her village, not her house, not her parents. What would she do? She had only her hands. And so she waited near the hole and fished, waited for food. And when the fish arrived, she took out some for herself to feed. And having eaten, she fell into an exhausted sleep. And in her sleep, she dreamed. Dreamed of her village, of her hut, of the platform outside her hut, of the ptarmigan feathers, of the seal skin, of the bows and spears. She dreamt. And when she woke up from the dream, she realized that some of her dream had come true. The house was there. The platform, the feathers, the skin, the spear. She pulled herself into her house. Her igloo. Built a fire. And made this her home. This became life every day. But she was lonely and every day she would step out to look if anyone had come looking for her. 
but no one could she see. Back in the village, as you know is custom in the Inuits, the very old are sent out to die in peace. And so an elderly, an old, old father was sent out by his children. Father, it, it breaks our heart to send you out. But we do see a light somewhere, sometimes in the far distance. Follow that light. Perhaps, perhaps you will live longer. You may be able to. Of course, the light they mentioned was the light of the skeleton woman. And that's where the old, old man headed. And when he found this hut, the igloo, he saw a woman of skeleton. Though it shocked him beyond words, who was he but an old, old man and lived his life? So he followed her into that hut. Skeleton woman was thrilled to find another. She welcomed him into her hut, gave him food to eat, and then pulled out a hoop that she had stretched from bones into a circle, gave it to him. Then gave him some seal skin, which she asked him to stretch on that hoop to make a drum. And when it had been stretched, the seal skin on that hoop stretched enough to make a drum, the old man played a soulful beat. She danced, danced to the rhythm. And as she danced, she got her skin and her flesh. And as he beat his drum, he got his youth back. And soon when the rhythm... ...reached a crescendo and stopped... The old man had become youthful again and the skeleton woman had got her skin and flesh. Now the two, hand in hand, made their way across the threshold of the igloo towards the very village from where they had come. And when people in the village saw the young couple arrive, they welcomed them, gave them space, and it is said, life began again. So, tell me, in this story, what image stays with you? And so that's how I would go into the process of looking at what part of the story connected to us? The story, as I said, comes from the Inuit culture. And I got it from a book called The Patakin Tales. It's a beautiful story about uh, losing everything and becoming whole again. And I just amaze at the wonder, of the imagination of these people. And I think it comes because they live in a land where imagination is the only thing that can help them survive. And that's why we should never, ever let our imagination go away. We must always keep it alive. Absolutely. Very well said, uh, Soumya. Imagination is the one suitcase that you, that you carry with you when you 
uh, listening in story circle or listening to any story for that matter. Thank you for that beautiful Inuit stories. Um, stories um, connect with you and uh, really transform you, right? And uh, yeah. as a transformative uh, storyteller, healing storyteller, practitioner, and uh, I know that you are also a Bharatanatyam dancer and the beautiful hand movements and finger movements and gestures only added to the story and actually added to the visualization process. So uh, that, that was really beautiful. I attended a workshop over the weekend on mindfulness where I was taken through two visualization process. And in storytelling, that's what we do. You, you want the audience to visualize and travel yes. within the story and be the story, you know? Identify with the characters. Beautiful. Thank you for that beautiful story, Soumya. Um, I wanted to and ask I you. Uh, space <laughs> has called for the story. The space has called for the story. Absolutely. You, yes. I could see you going into a meditative state while playing the drum and everything, you know. Thank you for that, really. Uh, Soumya, since it is a conversation and expressions, uh, I have a few questions which I'm sure our listeners would like to know. Uh, that you have recently, you know, with four other wonderful storytellers across India, and I know uh, them uh, myself personally, uh, except Poonam Joshi. I think I might have met her, but I don't, I haven't interacted, though I've been interacting with her online that you followed this healing storytelling network which is wonderful and that brings me to the next question what is the way forward what do you uh, think is going to happen i mean is the pandemic going to end we are all uncertain about it but we are hopeful uh, I believe 2022 things should end. I'm into numerology. Number six is my best number. So number six means everything is, you know, set to rest and we rise again. So what is the future for uh, healing stories, future for your endeavor, the storytell space and the healing network? Can you share that with us? Um so the way forward is definitely uh, I, now I'm in a journey of uh, going into the Gita as uh, uh, we seem to be uh, traveling parallel uh, lives here, you and me. So yes, I'm also in, uh, uh, I won't say I'm learning the Gita, but I'm learning to chant the Gita. And the Gita time and time again says that action, right action, is what we have to engage in. Let us not lose our hope. Let's always know that uh, what is right will uh, prevail. So that's how I see that we keep adding, all of us, every storyteller, everybody, uh, adds a little bit of our right action into this ocean. Then, you know, we will come out, we will, we will thrive, we will survive, we will thrive. And um, we must look at, uh, 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 you know, uh, bringing, spreading this love. And I believe, I'm a strong believer of love, you know, love as a language. So let's just uh, spread love as a language. And I think the more we all learn to speak this language of love through stories and through songs and through music and dance and whatever it is, that is our expression, you know, that which calls to us. That is the way we can uh, we can bring this whole world into the space of collective healing. And I think that's the vision of ISHN. And that's where we all resonate. The ladies who uh, I joined with, each one is such a gem. Uh, we all resonate in this one thing that we have, we are, we want love to prevail and uh, not, the language of hate should be overrided by the language of love. And that's what I see for uh, myself. I want to continue to understand and learn the language of love in many ways. And I think every time a story and uh, before the story, I actually was an avid book reader. So 
anybody who recommends a book that I, I mean, I enjoyed reading, I'm like in love with them and the book. So, you know, it goes like that. This is at the very personal and selfish uh, uh, level. I'm saying that uh, let's keep sharing and uh, go back to learn and spread the language of love through stories, through any creative modality. And I think that is important. Um, we we must keep we storytellers you know the quote which is everybody shares storytellers i think dalai lama he has one who said the uh, that you know we need more storytellers and wisdom keepers rather than you know people who are just and so let's all it may look like oh the competition is increasing but you know what i think there is enough space for everyone in this world and each one of us so uh, each one of us is adding such value and the other image that comes to my mind is uh, the um, indra's um, net so apparently indra's palace uh, in the skies has a net of diamonds and each of us is that diamond we become okay. the diamond and uh, we are all connected so the diamond uh, each one of us is a diamond in indra's net and we should always hold on to that feeling of preciousness within us and do what we can do best. There's a quote, yeah. uh, there is a uh, shloka in the Gita. Uh, I had actually brought it out, so I thought I'd share it here with you. Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha, Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha, Paradharmat Swanishtitat, Swabhava Niyata Karma, Kurvan Apnoti Kilmisham. Sorry for my pronunciation, but what it means is that each one of us has our uh, little occupation or duty to do. Better to do ours with with uh, with the flaw. Maybe as what whatever we are meant to be doing, we may do it with a little flaw. That's okay, but don't try to do somebody else's because it'll never work out. Do whatever you can, even if it has little flaws in it. So that's what I would like to say in the end. Very well, very well said, uh, Soumya. Absolutely. You know, um, stories are what sustain us. That will sustain us uh, in the long run. You know, stories give us comfort. Stories uh, are healing. Stories are like our best friends. And one can always go back and pick up that uh, uh, feather or that story. And that will come knocking at our door and say, Hey, you remember, you're going through this situation, but just why don't you go to that story? And yes. that story will give an answer to your present problem. I completely believe in that. And uh, uh, I wish you, your team at ISHN, all the best because it's a wonderful thing to um, uh, come up with this kind of healing storytellers network and to hold space. And that is the way forward, you know. And uh, as for what you said about Gita, yes, Chinmaya Mission is starting uh, Bhajago in them. So I have enrolled myself. And uh, as you know, uh, I'm not a, a good student. I'm one of those rebels who asks a lot of questions. So uh, I, I've uh, told my friend that uh, uh, if they entertain discussions, I would like to be a part of it, uh, not just a, a quiet, student in the class because then i can uh -huh. read uh, uh bhajagovinda myself and uh, get all the details but that's me uh, but it will be wonderful because uh, when i was very young my mother taught uh, bhajagovinda the 10 shlokas which actually ms subalakshmi sings and yeah. uh, we knew that it is the essence of gita so it is the essence and uh, uh, but now in these times, Gita is very much in the front, Bhagavad Gita. Everybody is uh, talking about it because you are looking for answers. Yes. So it, it gives you answers. Like it's a, like a psychotherapy. They only facilitate. You find the answer within yourself. <laughs> you know, you come to that. So this is really wonderful to get this glimpse of healing stories. So uh, what does the you. future hold for Soumya Srinivasan? Uh, your story tells space, your healing. You're also one of the co-founders uh, of Bangalore Storytelling Society. 
So what does the future hold for uh, this? I mean, that would be my last question to you, if you can, uh, you know, help us uh, to um, understand. I'm sure we are all eager to know. I am going with the flow. Whatever comes my way, I want to do it with the best of my ability. I think uh, my quest has always been excellence. I always felt um, I need to excel and I never feel satisfied. So maybe the day I feel, OK, I have excelled will be the day that I will say, <laughs> that's it. Just what uh, comes in my way, I want to do it well. And I think that's Absolutely. that's what I uh, want to uh, Absolutely, say for Absolutely, Somya. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And that's going with the flow. My husband loves to tell me, be a water on lotus leaf. And he knows that I'm no lotus leaf. I'm not no, not the water on it as well. But uh, it's nice to, get, to be reminded of that, you know, to go with the flow. I fully agree with you. And I wish you all the best from Storytellers Cafe. Uh, like I said, friends, um, Soumya is a very soft, gentle, behind the scenes, never in the spotlight. And... Um, and the spotlight goes in search of Soumya. So oh. I think you understand <laughs> my drift when I introduce her. It's been a pleasure to have you on Storytellers Cafe. And for all the listeners, you're listening to uh, Soumya Srinivasan, our guest on Storytellers Cafe, and uh, wishing all the listeners a happy 4th of July and Canada Day. Yeah, actually, today when we are recording, First is Canada Day, Soumya. You know, my sister was talking to me from Toronto. That's how I kind of, I always forget. And 4th of July is the Independence Day for the Americans. So wishing everyone good health, safety, and uh, soon me. we shall all come out of this pandemic. Healthy, wiser, and uh, wealthier in experience, I think. Wealthy in experience. That's what matters. So it's been great having you as my guest. Any parting shot that you would like to leave uh, the cafe with? Anything that you would like to tell our listeners? Uh, speak the language of love. I want to say that. <laughs> Let's all speak the language of love. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Soumya. It's been a great pleasure. And I have the duty of playing the Bharat FM jingle. And so good evening to everybody in India and a good day to all the listeners in the United States. States. Yeah. Do you know, friends, that uh, this is recorded and you can at any time go on to the Bharat FM Facebook page and listen to Storytellers Cafe. It's also there on the YouTube channel. So even if you're unable to catch it at 9 p.m. India time or 11.30 a.m. Uh, United States Eastern time, you can always go back to Storytellers Cafe and listen to the session. So that will be wonderful. So I take your leave. Good evening, namaste, and good day to all the viewers and listeners. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat. Yeah, Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat.